Hi, I'm Lynn Morgan. I'm your Slippershod Pastor. You know, they say if you scratch a cynic, you'll reveal an idealist. And that statement makes sense to me. The way I tend to think of it is that a cynic is an idealist with a broken heart. So cynics believe that no one acts out of higher values or virtues, that everyone's in it for themselves, whatever they can get out of it. And all appearances to the contrary are just that, just appearances. But the idealist, they believe that no one acts out of self-interest and no one should, that we always act only out of our highest values and principles. Well, both of those are unrealistic views of human nature. And they're kind of two sides of one coin, because both are expressing a lot of all or nothing thinking. But that parallel reality, that tension between cynicism and idealism, it helps me understand, well, Judas. Because I think Judas is an example of the heartbroken disciple, the disappointed follower of Jesus who acts horribly, but acts horribly only in a matter of degree, not in kind. When Jesus gathers with his disciples at the Last Supper, he says, one of you will betray me. But we could make a case that all 12 betrayed him. Peter's denial and Judas's selling him out to the temple authorities are kind of the most vivid experiences but they all ran away. None of them stood up with him. And if that's not a betrayal, then you've never had a friend because you know if someone did that to you, it sure would feel like a betrayal. And we know that as the modern day disciples of Jesus, we don't have to receive 30 pieces of silver and we don't have to publicly deny that we know Jesus to betray our relationship with God and to betray the best things about ourselves. It's the way we are, or the way we can be. And so we need not be the victims of all or nothing thinking either. Jesus loved his disciples, offered himself in that first communion to all of his disciples, including Judas, forgave all of his disciples, including Peter. And who knows? if Judas had come back, that he might not have been received into Jesus' circle of forgiven disciples. That's our hope. That's our place. Where else could we be but in the circle of forgiven disciples? Because none of us are the ideal, and none of us are perfect. And in our hearts, all of us have betrayed and denied and abandoned the one who we do indeed love and seek to follow. Thank God we follow one who with grace and with life and with love holds us close and offers us his peace, peace that the world cannot give. Amen.